Hello and welcome to another how-to video. This is the video that a lot of you have been waiting for. What are we going to look at today? I'll get on to that right now. Before we go any further, don't forget to download DVS in your pocket. So if you've got an Android or an iOS like me, don't forget to download the DVS app. Loads of content, loads of competitions and access to your account and continually being improved. Thank you for everybody who has liked, shared and subscribed to all our social media platforms. Please continue to do so, ask questions and share as you see fit. So the product we're going to look at today, guys, is the much anticipated 2387G2 Color View. So the Color View 8 megapixel turret camera. Lots of you keep asking when it's due. Lots of you keep wanting it. Here it is. Some of you have already had some of these. We did have a stock um, a couple of weeks ago and some of you have been lucky enough to get some and some of you are gonna be lucky enough to get some of these sent to you as a gift. Watch out for more of that. But today we're gonna to review this quickly. We do have lots more stock of this inbound as well because we know this is gonna be a very, very popular camera. So the eight megapixel turret with color view the most anticipated camera of this year. So, take off the security sticker. You get the drill template, user manual. And then you get the camera with the Allen key for the security locking, RJ45 waterproof gland and some screws. So a couple of things I wanna point out a couple of things I want to point out about this. One, let's take that off because lots of you do that on your social media content. A couple of things. So standard new turret format design. So you've got the removable collar that comes off. Underneath you've got the three screws that lock onto your back box or you can just screw this straight to a soffit or something so you don't need a back box you don't need a back box that'll go straight onto the eve this cover cowling cover goes and conceals that you've also got the lock-in screw there the allen key or security star head should i say um which you tighten down to secure this in place then you've got the the body of the camera with the lens fixed lens so 2.8 or 4 mil fixed lens 8 megapixel f1 super aperture because it's color view so we need to let all that lovely light come in to give you that lovely 24 image 24 color vivid image plus the white light bar there what you will notice on this i'm trying to think if i've got one here i do have one over here but if you look at the g2 turret camera there let me just make this a little bit more obvious for you guys yeah so you can look see this the body is more elongated on this. So you've got a more elongated nose on there because of the chipset and the super wide aperture to fit it into this housing, the turret star, which is why it took a lot longer than we were expecting. We needed to elongate that body. So if you look at it in comparison to the existing body, you can see the elongated nose. So if I put it that way up, so it's the same, you can see the nose is more elongated. It's quite hard to, to see I can appreciate but you can see it is more elongated so if I do that definitely more elongated so that's one thing to note but aside that I've knocked the monitor and all sorts here look so aside from the fact that it's more elongated so the nose is more elongated the footprint is exactly the same so the base is the same the body is the same it's just a more elongated nose looks absolutely fine and i they did consult me before they did this and i absolutely agreed it was fine um and it's got a new up sticker so they put up on there as a text instead of the engrave so it's a bit more easier to see so you know which way is the right way up when you're orientating it so when you're fitting it up is the right orientation so you've got your 12 volt or your poe put the jacket on there make it waterproof now back boxes you can use the normal dm21s um, which is the normal bracket they do fit on there 
The spec sheet also says the PT6, the new PT6 bracket. You can use either. The PT6 bracket does fit it and it gives it a little bit more waterproofing, I guess you could say. Um, so it's the, that's why they recommend that one. But the DM21 does fit it and it's fine and it will operate and it will give you a good seal. So you can use either the DM21 or the PT6 to clear that up. The spec sheet moving forward should reflect that. So you've got that lovely modern aesthetic lens. You've got a built-in mic, so you can see that little tiny hole there above my finger. That's the microphone input, because it's an IU, so it has the microphone input, or the LU, sorry. And this is a 2.8 mil, so today I'm gonna change an older uh, color view. So I've got a four megapixel color view up there, which I'm gonna change for an eight megapixel color view. And we're gonna see how that looks and performs. Really excited by this. And you've also got the um, SD card slot and reset button on the side. So there's a side mount. Um, so when it's facing up, that's actually on the side. Oh, sorry, that side. So the reset button and SD card slot is under there. So I'm going to quickly change this over. Stop saying welcome to me. Um, I'm going to quickly change this over from the old 4 megapixel uh, to the new 8 megapixel G2 Terra style. We'll have a look what that image looks like on the... Uh, web browser and then we'll see how it performs i'm really excited about this stay tuned okay so we fitted the camera now so we're going to log in to the camera so i fitted it in the demo room ideally i'd fit it outside i do have one to fit outside i just don't have the time right now to do that so we're going to go to live view and show you what the image looks like we are going to turn the lights off as well so when it loads obviously 8 megapixel 2.8 wide 2.8 millimeter wide image. Obviously, if your web browser is struggling, you can make a substream to make the web browser run a little bit more smooth. And you can see that substream. And it come back and double click. So that's the eight megapixel turret for you. So you can see where this area is here. That's about 10 meters away from the camera position. So like on a commercial domestic property, 10 meters is still quite a distance away. So I'm gonna go and stand in the corner just so you've got a good idea what that represents. So, Hopefully that gives you a good sort of representation of what that would look like at uh, an object sort of 10 meters away. Obviously being eight megapixel, objects further away will still be recognizable from that nature. You can see even when you digitally zoom in, so if I draw a box around there, you can see there, you can almost see the writing on there. So you keep zooming in there. So, you know, all our product supports the digital zoom. So configuration side. So into the configuration. This camera's got a built-in microphone, like I said. So if I want to speak into the microphone, or I want to hear any audio from the microphone, I'll just go back to live view, and then I'll show you where to set it up. Because by default, the audio stream isn't enabled. But I have enabled it. So if I turn the microphone on. Hello. 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 Hello? So you should. So you should. Hello? 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 So there is audio enabled. There is audio enabled on that camera. Hello? Hello? There you go. So under configuration, first thing is we're going to start with the system. So very familiar web browser feel, so I'm not going to spend too long on it. You can see there, 2387G2LU. That's currently the latest firmware on the Hike UK portal. Now, they will keep improving that. One thing to note is there is differences between the old and the new firmware and also the platform. So this is the C hardware version, so it's the G5 platform firmware I'm using currently. Um, on some of the older firmwares, it did actually support... On the VCA, you could actually support the white light function. So you could draw an intrusion area and the linkage action, you could turn the white light on. On the latest firmware, that's actually missing on this model. But we've spoken to them yesterday and they are going to put it back in. So VCA resource, by default, it comes out with smart events. So that enables the line crossing intrusion. 
Of course, you can enable face capture mode, which you lose the VCA function, but you gain the face capture menu down here. And then monitoring, you lose all VCA, but it allows for image rotate mode. Maintenance, standard reboot, reboot default, and then the auto maintenance, so you can set a time and date and the camera will reboot um, in, at that time and date. Security, fill in as you need. Network, so all my network settings. Again, under platform access, it supports Height Connect and ISA. So ISA is our backend connection function to add a product directly to Hike Central. So if you're using Hike Central and you want to add a product via ISA, so that means you don't need a fixed IP address, then you enable ISA, fill in the details and link it to the Hike Central in question. But then you've got other integrations. You've got HTTPS, integration protocols. So you've got the uh, open network video interface on Biff effectively. You can add that, enable it. Video and audio. So 8 megapixel, you can reduce it down. Don't know why you'd buy an 8 megapixel and reduce it to 1080p, but you can reduce that down. By default, it comes with video stream enabled, so we need to enable video stream. And I've set it as H.265. I don't personally use H.265+, plus. it creates a lot of problems in my opinion. So I just use H.265, and I've set it at 25 frames of real time effectively, 8, megapix 8 megapixel, and save that. Again, with the substream, I've enabled video and audio. By default, it's not enabled. Uh, so I've enabled that. Audio. Input volume. It comes at 50% by default. So the inbuilt microphone uh, comes at 50% effectiveness. So I turn it right away up to 100 and click save. So it's the most effective. What I would say is it's probably... 8 to 10 meters away, you can hear conversations that uh, depend on background noise like traffic, uh, environmental noises like um, weather, etc. So that's going to you know, cause the effectiveness of the microphone. But in a sterile environment like this, sort of 8 to 10 meters away, a uh, normal, um, I speak quite loudly, of course, people know that, but most conversations 8 to 10 meters away is acceptable when the microphone input is at 100. But again, it'll be based on the environmental factor. Environmental noise filter is on or off. I turn it off personally, but you can enable it, which tries to cut down some of the background noise and clear that audio up. Region of interest if you want it, and then display info on stream. Under image, all of the standard functions. Don't forget this is a white light camera, so no infrared. So you can do all of the scene adjustments. Under the day-night switch, you've got the white light effective so you can adjust it up and down so the effect of the brightness of the white light and then you've got it auto or manual white light on or off and then you've got it to auto or day or scheduled whichever suits your application so you can force it into day mode or you can make it into nighttime mode with the white light on backlight settings etc standard functions that most of the high vision camera range supports now and the event, you've got motion detection. Don't forget these cameras do come with AccuSense. So they've got the enhanced motion detection function with human and vehicle detection. But under smart event, again, AccuSense technology. So you've got the intrusion up to four boxes and line crossing up to four boxes. This isn't the live guard camera. So we don't have a live guard at eight megapixel currently in color view. Uh, there is one coming. Um, so we can't trigger a flashing light or the speech currently. But under the linkage action, if you are using a firmware that supports it, you're watching this and, the, and then you put a firmware on that supports it, under linkage method, you'd have a white light there option there with the timer. So you can put it on for, say, 15 seconds um, if you require it and click save. So again, standard functions, we support all of the um, human and vehicle detection, minimum, maximum object side on the detection area. It's as simple as this, drawing a line across the area you want to detect. So for instance, if this was my driveway, human detection, 50% save, enable it, and then arm in schedule and linkage method. Really, really simple. And then storage, SD card up to 256 gigabyte, net hard drive if you want it. Cloud storage is a specific setup that you need a CVS management server for. But then under schedule settings, 
all our cameras that have SD cards, which is the majority of them now, they actually do do the timing snapshot. So you can do time lapse on but any camera that has an SD card will support that uh, time lapse function. Okay, so very, very simple. So that's done. So again, back to the live view of the camera. So what I have done is added it to the Hike Connect app as well. So if I bring up Hike Connect. So I've got it, Hike Connect there added, and you can hear the audio. Hello, testing, testing. Getting the feedback there. But you can see the audio works through the app. Eight megapixels, you put it in rotate mode. Eight megapixels, absolutely fantastic. So I've just added it directly to the app. It just nice and easy, I'll close that down. So direct to the app. Um, and the audio works as long as you set the audio like I just showed you the audio will work Now I'm going to turn the lights off and see how effective it is. So go back to live view Just one thing to point out I do get asked this quite a lot so I thought I'd just quickly go back to it under day night switch the sensitivity comes as 4 by default Sometimes what people will see is there's not although there's quite a lot of supplementary light outside street lights houses security lights starlight etc it's enough to keep it not going, bringing the white light on, but the white light would really benefit the scene. So what I always do, if, it, if you're in any doubt, put it up to sensitivity of seven, which means it'll switch much sooner than it would by default. And therefore the white light should come on a lot sooner and you don't see any issues. So I change it to white light seven and I change it from auto to manual. So it always goes by the brightest setting. The default is auto. Um, but I tend to find personally, in my personal experience, I put it to manual and the highest intensity to get the best out of the scene. So I'm going to go to live view. And I'm going to turn the lights off and one, see how quickly this actually activates. So you'll see it before the switch. So I'm going to cover my monitors up to try and cut the white light, uh, light out from the door. So hopefully it'll be as dark as I can realistically make it in the room. The white light should come on um, and give us a representation of being a very dark room. Let's cover these monitors up. Okay, there we go. Here it goes. take these mon uh, jackets off so there we go folks that realistically shows you the power of the white light now from what I can see again the camera hasn't moved the white lights now gone off because it's back into day mode that white light it was quite bright whether you know you think so or not when you look at it at 100% it is quite intense so it does light up that immediate area so you get better object identification better recognition from objects. You can see what color clothes or color vehicles or color materials there are. Massive deterrent with a white light on it. It can act as a big deterrent in itself. So there's a huge benefit there. And there's another undersold benefit of this. It's a really big health and safety aspect. So if you've got this on a property and it lights up the immediate pathway, especially now winter's come in, now hopefully it'll give enough light there. One, obviously for security purposes, two health and safety can help prevent slip trips and falls and make people feel safe when they're locking up a building or opening up early in the morning because it's dark when we go and dark when we get home. There's a big, big benefit from the safety aspect as well as the security aspect. So I hope that gives you a reasonable justification of what this camera can do. Really look forward to seeing you guys, your images and posts, hashtag real installers. Get them online, share them with us. We'll reshare them. But I think this camera is going to be a massive, massive seller. I'm really excited this year. And I'm glad I can present this video to you. Other than that, take care, folks. We'll see you next week for another how-to video. Bye-bye for now.